Yeah, let's just pray. I'll bow our heads and Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for just giving us uh, today and giving us a new morning that may we come to your house and we may worship you and uh, put, sing praises to your name. Uh, I pray right now that you would help us to really um, to really sing these uh, to you, to sing these uh, words, just, uh, your word, and that your word in these songs may speak and minister into our hearts.
from every man Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy from every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be So today we're gonna talk about uh, comfort and you know Probably a, a month and a half ago and go and call me and then talk about Hey, could you come over and, and you know help us out with the sermon and all that stuff and, and I was thinking, hmm, I'm too old for this, right? <laughs> I'm saying, hmm. Uh, but then, you know, the thing that burdened me is, is, is your generation. Uh, because your generation is so much different with mine. Uh, when, when we're growing up, we don't have this much of social media and the pressure that you guys have. And um, so I was, I was thinking, you know, how much you guys have to go through more than us because you know before when we want to say something to somebody we have to wait until next morning and then we're going to go to the school and then we're going to look at that person and then say that thing to that person right it takes a long time right but today you guys just get onto instagram and say something about somebody and that's it it's so quick and so easy right and, and, and then you can crush somebody, you can make somebody look bad and all that stuff. And I remember my, my children also went through all that stuff and they cried and I and all that stuff. So it's, you know, I have that burden in my heart. And, uh, so I, I'm thinking about well, what should I share with you guys? And uh, I wanna share with you a title called Confidence. How do we have a confidence we live in the in the world that is so corrupted and, and so chaotic and, and so much of you know political this and that and, and, and so much social media you know they, they pull you this way they pull you that way um, so how how do we stand firm uh, in the faith of Christ how how do we do that I know it's very difficult even for me as a adult as a you know as a pastor as well. And um, so that's that's the thing that I want to share with you. And, and um, we can, you know, uh, reading a verb from uh, Timothy, uh, second chapter one, and they say this: For God did not give us the spirit of what Timothy, right? And but the spirit of power, of love, and the self-discipline. Now Timothy is a is a young pastor, just just like you guy, uh, probably a little bit younger. I mean older, and um, he he's scared too because he's he facing a lot of opposition and a lot of pressure on himself. Um, so Paul, one of his mentor or teachers, you know, write it to him. I mean he he wrote this letter to him and and try to encourage him. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. You the hand of God. And God did not put you there, you know, for any other reason, but have a strong and, and have a, a good influence to the people and have the power and the love and the sound discipline and all that stuff. And um, so that's, that's, that's a verse that I want to share with you. How do you and I can have that, the spirit of powers of love and the sound discipline today? Um, so I want to share with you, uh, I, I think most of you guys know this story, right? Uh, the story of the King David. The story of King David and Goliath. You know that story? Anyone of you guys know that story? Yeah, most of you guys. Hey, I know you. Yeah, I think I saw you when you were this little. <laughs> it's, yeah. Done it. Uh, hey. Done it. Done it. Yeah, it's one son, right? Uh, wow, you're so big now. Oh my God, I know your parents when you, you're not even can see. <laughs> but anyway, um, so so long ago, you know the Israelite people they don't have king, um, so they didn't have to have king, and they have this crisis, identity crisis. They don't know who they are. Although it's funny because although they they are the strongest uh, nation in the world at that time. No one can beat them. You know, 
the Israelite can they can win any battles because of God. But still they're so scared because they say, God, we don't have a king. So they have this crisis and they just want to be like other nations, right? And today we have the same that type of crisis, right? Because we want to be like other people. We want to be, uh, you know, looking this good and looking that good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and looking this different or this and that. And we want to be like that. We want to be so cool. We want to be the strongest church. Or we want to be like, uh, you know, strongest youth group. But we want to be like the most good looking person in the world and all that stuff, right? Um, so then we invent Photoshop. <laughs> so we invent Photoshop. So we can look good in the Instagram, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. And then we invent, you know, something called like, uh, I don't know, Fuji films and all that stuff. Um, so that's how we try to, because we have this crisis in, in ourselves. Um, and, and the Israelites have no different. They have this crisis. And they wonder, Wait a minute, you know, I, I want to be like that nation. I want to have the king. And then God, God told them, okay, okay, if, if, you, if you have king, there's a lot of issues. Okay, first of all, he going to tax you because he have to build the kingdom. So he going to tax you. He going to put a lot of restriction on you. He going to take your land. He going to take your property. He going to take your son and daughters to work for him. You like that? And uh, the Israelites say, yeah, 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 I, I like that, I want that. And um, it's funny, right? Because we're human, and somehow we think that, uh, oh wow, uh, we, <laughs> we think that uh, if, you know, if, if we have some restrictions and we have some, some kind of, um, of uh, someone controlling us and stuff like that, it will really be better. Uh, than God, and and that's what they, they was thinking about, and and so God say, are you sure? And they, they say yes. So God give him give them uh, a king called Saul. You know that story, right? And how the, I don't want to go to that detail. But here's another crisis: when they become a kingdom, and then they have a king, and they're gonna start establishing the kingdom. You know that they have a palace. They have the armies, they have the king, they have the queen. This looks so good. And then other nations start wanting their, you know, properties. They start wanting all these people, all these uh, wonderful uh, resources, right? Because now they start building all the resources. Um, so now they have another crisis because other nations want to invade them want to take over them uh, and, and, and that's, that's the crisis that we have today um, sometimes we just you know the world want to take control of us and want to take control of our future and our life and where you're going to be and where you're going to end up I heard a lot of people say you know you don't need to go to school um, all you have to do is make a good video and earn the money well, that's true, but that's, that's only 1% of millions and, 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 and uh, billion of people. It's only 1% of those people. But that's how, they, how, that's how they put it in your head and say, you don't need to go to school. You, you just do a good video and earn the money. Or you, you know, I, I talk to a lot of uh, boys and they say, I want to be a gamer. I say, why? Because gamers make a lot of money. Well, it's only less than 1% can do that. Are you in that less than 1% can do that? Ah, oh, he said, yeah, 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 I can. <laughs> uh, so that's another crisis that you and I facing, right? Because the world putting a lot of, you know, uh, Thing like that. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying trash, but I'm just saying that this is so much bombarding with those information that cause you to get confused. 
should I go to school? Should I grab, I mean, get the degree and just like uh, go into the, through the traditional way to make money, to make the living? Or should I go with the new way? You know, we're gonna do all these things uh, to make money, to be rich uh, in the short term. But there is no shortcut, right? And, and that's why there's no shortcut. And that's why when all these people start hammer the kingdom, King Saul was so scared because there's no shortcut. And um, so he, and then he facing this uh, filthy uh, uh, nation who has so much resource before them because they, they also already established before them. They already have all these resources. They already have them, armies and everything. So well-trained army. Now this new nation have no training, no army that's you know been uh, many years of in training, anything like that. So they were scared too. But then another thing that scared them is that the, the Philippines is bigger than them, stronger than them, I mean physically. Uh, and, and that's make them even more scared I don't know if the kids will understand all this. But anyway, um, so they were scared and they don't know what to do. Uh, he, here's the thing. You know, back then, if, if you understand the, the, the geographic of it, so the Israelite today is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a Israel country right now in the Middle East. So they in the mainland, uh, and they in the mountain. Okay. And there is a, uh, the valley connect between the mountain to the coastal. Okay. And the Philippines, live, uh, they live in the, in the coastal area. And they're strong. They're big. they mostly six feet tall or, 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 high, or taller. Um, so in order for them to invade each other, you have to go through this valley. Okay. So you have to go through from the castle, and then you go through the valley, and then you go up to the hill to fight with the Israelite. And that is no good because you expose yourself, right? Because when you go through the, the valley, people can hide be, uh, in the bushes and then can attack you, right? Or when you go up the hill, you get tired and then people can attack you there too. So that's the reason why they stuck because the, Israel, uh, the Israelite wouldn't dare to go back down here to fight, and then but the Philistine also kind of scared too. So it's scared because they, they are afraid of all this, uh, you know, certain attack, and um, so they kind of stuck in the middle. So back then there, there is a, a battle called uh, what do you call it? A call a single battle. Single battle meaning that. They're gonna send out their best soldier and they fight and whoever win will take over the other. Okay? So that's what happened here. So the, the Philippines say, hey, see we can't cross the valley. We know that it's too dangerous and you can't cross this valley because we know that we're gonna take you, I mean we're gonna uh, kill you. So let's do this. Let's do a single paddle, battle, right? Let's see who can win. And they send out this giant, strong, you know, the soldiers. And uh, the Bible say, I don't know, six feet, six feet nine or ten, seven feet tall. And um, they try to uh, intimidate the Israelites. And the Israelites say, oh no, they were so scared. And they don't know what to do because they, I don't think they can face this. But I want to share with you this, this young guy. You know his name, right? David. And this David guy, uh, I have to show a lot of these pictures, but uh, this is so cool. Uh, and David is, is not, not as big as, as Goliath, but, uh, but he had this faith, and he had this confidence in him. So one day he came out to, uh, uh, he, he brought out all the food to his brothers. And he heard all this news about this giant guy gonna take over the, the, the kingdom and all that stuff. 
And you know what he's saying, and I love what he's saying here, and uh, what I want to say to you. And it's, it's so cool, this is what he's saying. He's saying, David asked the man standing near him, what will be done for the man who killed this Philistine and removed this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God? So he was a little guy and, and he talked like big, big guy and all these, you know, uh, old man and, and the king and the general was scared and, and this little boy is just talking like that. See how much confidence he has? And I, I look at his, his life and I go, how does he get all this confidence and be able to stand, uh, stood before the king and say, hey king, I can do this. I can fight this guy, big guy. How does he get all that? So I was like, oh man, and then I look and search for his his characters and his life and all that stuff. And he and, and then I found out, whoa. You know, he'd been a, a shepherd for a long time. You know, when you are like a youngest uh, uh, the youngest kid in the family, uh, you get bullied a lot, right? <laughs> Your older bully you. So they, they push you to go to the, the field a lot and say, go and do this, you know, as, as, uh, 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 be a shepherd and, and shipping all this, uh, you know, helping all, all the family to uh, keeping all this sheep uh, safe and sound and all that stuff. So during that time, when you are a shepherd, you have to stay with the herd. So you have to stay with the sheep for, for, for like days or even weeks and months. Because what happened is, you know, um, they have a, a, a grass field. So when they finish one grass field, they have to bring them to another grass field so you can feed them. So they have to travel from place to place for many, many, many days and, and months and weeks. Um, so that's, that's a very hard job. But another hard job that David had to do is have to protect all these sheep. And he's a little guy, so he had to think about, oh man, the, I need the way to protect all my sheep. So what he did, he, he learned how to do this uh, slingshot, right? Because he cannot come so close to, uh, to the, uh, the uh, you know, the, um, the, the wolf or the lions or, or the tiger or whatever, they wanna take his uh, sheep. So he had to be apart far from, from the animal. So he learned how to do that slingshot. And also, he learned how to pray to God, and he learned how to ask God for help, and he learned how to to do all these things, right? And um, so that's that is the thing that that is really help him to gain his confidence, because you know he can defeat all this all these uh, animals. This is that's all these animals that prey his the sheep. So each day he gained his confidence, each day. And each day he prayed to God because he had nothing to do. He doesn't have an iPad. He doesn't have an iPhone. He doesn't have an iMac. <laughs> so what did he do? He just prayed to God that can help him because he know that he cannot fit. I mean, face to face with all these giants, you know, animal like lions or wolf. And it's, if, if you understand the, the lifestyle as a shepherd, you understand you know, how much pressure that he have to face with, right? Um, so that is the thing that, that he's been working on. And that's how he built his confidence, okay? He built so much in his confidence. And um, so when he saw this, you know, the chaotic, sin that he's, he, he experienced. People are people scared. People don't know what to do with these giants and all that stuff. He's not scared because he deal, I mean, he dealt with, with the lions before. He dealt with the wolf. If you understand how, how a wolf, they, um, they, they pray that their, their prayer is that they, they will go by, you know, a number, by a path. 
path of the wolf, right? They don't go by, by itself, but they go by a path of wolf. And, and he done all that. So he gone through all that. And that's how he built his confidence, okay? And um, so I just want to, I just want to ask you, do you feel like, you know, what you go through um, is helping you or, or defy you? Or it's making you weaker? Or it's making you stronger, right? Um, what you going through, I know it's very difficult because what you're going through is that your parents might not understand what you're going through, right? And they might not understand you know, the pressure that you are in or might not understand that you don't do very well in this subject. Ah, the math is so hard. Or maybe the chemistry is so hard. Or maybe the physics is so hard. And, and, and your parents do not understand that and they, they're still expecting A and B and, and all that stuff, right? And, and, and you go through all that. But I want to tell you, and that's, that's what God wanted to go through. That's what David went through. He went through all this trial and arrow. He, he, he tried very hard. And, and he, he, he trusts that the Lord will be able to help him. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about the confidence. It's really come from, you know, the trust. This is two trust that we always have. First of all, you gotta trust in yourself, right? You are trusting yourself that that you've done this. You you have done this, and you have you know all these experiences. You, you you can handle all this stuff. And but the the thing that I want to share with you today is the trust in the Lord. Okay, and let me make it more simple and easy to understand. Trust in the Lord. It's just like you trust in your parents. Who do you think that's, um, who, who, any of you guys think that uh, your parent will ruin your life? Any of you guys think that your parents will ruin your life? Uh, any of you guys think that your parents will make sure uh, you didn't make it through school? Uh, any of you guys think that your parents are really uh, gonna make sure you don't make it in life? No, right? None of that. So that's what I want you to think about. You know, when, when you're growing up and you think your parents don't understand you, uh, they don't, uh, they against you, or they do anything to you. But that's not true. That's how the world try to uh, give you that impression. But that actually, your parents should love you so much. So that you have to put that trust in, in them and trust the process that you're going to go through. The process that David go through as a shepherd, that he trusts that because God used that experience to repair him for the battle with the giants, right? So whatever the battle or whatever the thing that you experience with your parents, with your, your brother and sister and, and, and with your uh, friends, it's preparing you for the big battle ahead, which is called life. Which is called life. Life is very tough. And that's why your parents, your church, your leaders, they try to prepare you for that battle. Okay? So you have to trust that process and understand that is a process that you and I have to go through. And, and, and I just love that process. You know, when I was younger, um, I didn't understand that process. So I, I'm kind of like, you know, hating it. Why I have to go through all this, right? Uh, but as I get older, I understand every one of us have to go through this process. Let me get another uh, slide up here. Uh, that I want to share with you a, a few things about when you don't have a trust. Uh, here's some sign that you and I will know that we don't have this trust with our parents, our friends, our brother and sister. You normally are gonna avoid a commitment. You don't want to do anything with anybody. You avoid any commitment. The next one is uh, you assume that people are doing things to hurt you, right? Uh, the next thing is is you say, "This is what 
uh, you uh, uh, isolating yourself. You say, oh man, people don't like me anymore. So I'm gonna isolate myself. And the next thing you think is like, oh God, it's like being overly secretively about yourself, right? And then you, uh, you pick a fight and, and then you start fighting in the internet. Uh, you start fighting with other people and then you go with that feeling over protectives and you can continue to go and you can go like reluctant to open up and, and you processing all the past hurts that you have so all this this is a feeling or this is all the the thing that the sign that that, that knowing that you are in the trouble of trust you don't trust well, either you don't trust your parents, you don't trust yourself, you don't trust your, friend, your friends. And that's why you're picking all this stuff. You avoid all this stuff. You don't want to do anything. Uh, you, you, you get angry all the time. You want to isolate yourself. Uh, you, you're overly, you know, uh, uh, thinking about all the people saying all that stuff. Because you don't have that trust, you don't have that confidence in you. You don't trust that this is a process that I go through, right? And uh, what I want to tell you, the, the best thing about this, about this story, is, uh, is about the love. That when you develop that love, that you will see it. That's why uh, Apostle Paul taught Timothy how to be confident because you have this love. Now, I want to. Um, so I, I wanna I wanna go to the next slide and talking about this. This is this is very cool. Um, let's talk about why is a confidence that's related to love. Because what happened is when you love, um, you will be able to overcome this this uh, uh, low self esteem or or, or, or uh, identity crisis. Because when you love, you don't care much about uh, what people, other people think or do to you. Because all you do is you just love. You love yourself first, you love your parents, whatever your parents did to you or uh, you understand that they love you. And it's help you to understand that how you know, the process can go. Love will overcome if, a lot of things if you read First uh, Corinthians chapter 13, you know that love concur all things. And that's why God wants, I mean the Paul wanted Timothy to understand when you, if you wanna if you wanna overcome your uh, a timid uh, the timidity or you wanna overcome uh, your fear or you wanna overcome uh, whatever thing that, that, that you scare of, then develop this love. Because when you develop this love, then you understand that these things are not as bad as it's looking, okay? Um, like the thing that your parents done to you or help you or try to help you, it's not as bad as it look. Because you might look and say, oh, they restrict me to go to the party, they restrict me to this and that. Uh, I have to go sleep at 10, 11, or 12 o'clock, and all that stuff. But if you look at the love that they want to give you, then you understand that love is for your own good, that the process that you have to go through, that the process that they're going to push you through, right? Um, so that's why, first of all, you got to understand that love is to give you that confidence. You don't have to fight with your parent. You don't have to fight with your friend. You don't have to fight with your sibling anymore. But most of all, I want I want you to think about self love. What is self love? You know, a lot of people think about self love when when they talk about I gotta buy more clothes for myself. I gotta put all more makeup on, on my face. Or I have to buy the wig or whatever to to you know to make me look good. No, that, that's not the self love that God we're talking about. Self love here got talking about. Um, the inner love that you have, the inner self love, you know, the, the spiritual size of the love inside of you, and that's what he's talking about. When you build, build up that self love, you 
when you build up that understanding of yourself, you build up understanding of uh, what God called you, and why why you born in this family, why why you in this church, why you in this and that, and why you in that school, why you have a group of friends like that, and all that. Stuff. When you understand all that, it causes self love. Okay. Because if, if other than that, like you let other people run your life, that's not a self-love. Let the media and social media run your life, that's not a self-love. The self-love is discovering yourself within God. Okay? Discovering whatever God call you. What why God put me in there? Uh, why God doing all this stuff? Um, you know, I wanna tell you a story so I so you don't go sleep now. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, when I first came here, uh, 1981, right, 1981, and um, I was scared because I, I didn't speak any English, and they put me into a school, and I had to uh, get right into, uh, uh, what they call it, uh, like junior year, and I had to take all these uh, courses to graduate from high school, and it's so hard. It's like U.S. history, uh, American literature, and all that stuff in order for me to graduate. I was so scared. But you know, oh, uh, I was so class because there is a woman that helped all the immigration children. So she helped me uh, to discover who I am. She said, you are so class. You be here and, and you start learning English and then you, you live in the, in the country that so freely, and, and, and it's, it's helped me so much to overcome my fear. Because at that time, I was so fearful about my future, about my life, about what I'm gonna do with this US history and, 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 and you know American literature and all that stuff. It's so hard. Um, I, I just remember the first day that I, I um, I, 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 I attend the university uh, and then I went to the bookstore and I bought uh, all the textbook. And when I saw the textbook, I was like, it's false. I just froze because the, the textbook is about this big, okay? The chemistry book is about this big. And I can barely understand what is saying? I say, oh my! And each of them, each of the pages that I flip through, I'm just I keep sweating because oh, I couldn't understand any of them at all. But then I remember, um, you know, that, that lady told me, says you are so blessed to live in this country. And I keep saying to myself, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm gonna learn this language. I'm gonna learn this no matter what. If I fail, so what? If I'm gonna fail, so what? I'm gonna learn this English. I'm gonna learn this. And that's how I got it. But you know this? And that's why I want to tell you, so love is so important. You gotta say to yourself, no matter what happened, no matter how hard this is, I'm gonna go through it. I live in the land that's so free and, and, and so good. I, I live in a, uh, a, a, a household that my parents love me. My parents provide for me everything. Okay, they might not give me you know, the Tesla or my, might not give me the BMW, but I have everything I need. And that's so I need. And that's a comfort and that's a self-love that you should have. And I, I love the church that I'm in. Although it might not be the biggest church in the world, or might not have a biggest band in the, uh, in the world, but I have the band. I have the room for my uh, youth group. I have the TV for my youth group. And all that stuff. And just be grateful and thankful. And that's self-love, right? And you have so much confidence when you think that way. And I was like that. I, I, I look at that textbook and I cry that night. I tried to sleep last night because I couldn't understand it, any of the page at all. None. I was so scared. But God helped me through that. 
and I'm very sure that God can help you. But another thing that I want to share with you is, is what help you. When you self-love, but if you stay there and you stop there, you will become a selfish person, right? So uh, another confident uh, by loving yourself, but another thing to help your confidence is by helping and loving other people. When you can help other people, when you go into uh, other people's life and help them, grow them, help them uh, through all this, uh, what they call the, the tribe and, and turbulence in their life and the issue in their life, it will help you. It will help to uh, uh, boost your confidence. I want to share with you uh, this thing also. You know, when I was an uh, uh, engineer at the, at the, the, a, the late 80s, and I didn't know anything about the Bible, although I, uh, I've been going to church for many years, but I, I know very little about the Bible, right? So I didn't have this much confidence to share, uh, you know, within a group like this. I'm, I'm kind of like shy and, and, and nervous because I, I don't know the Bible very well. And one day my pastor, I don't know if you know Sikan, uh, he asked me, he said, hey, you know one of you, um, you conduct, a, a, why don't you form a group for the young family and then uh, teach them the, uh, the Bible? And I was so scared. I said, oh, oh, no, 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 no. And he said, yes, you can do it. You can do it. So um, I was scared. So what did I do? I went to the bookstore and I bought so many books about the family, about so many books about the Bible. And I started reading, 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 reading. And, um, and, then, and then, then we formed that, uh, uh, what they call it, the young family group. And then I started sharing. And I start boosting my confidence. I'm start helping other people. I'm starting helping other couples. And I'm getting more confident and confident. And they say, oh, I can do this. I can do this, right? Right? You shake your head, yeah? You nod your head. And yes, we can do this. So by loving yourself, by serving others, you're going to get so much confidence in yourself. Um, it's, it's just amazing uh, when you're taking chemistry. Uh, if, 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 they don't allow, uh, if, they ask, if they don't ask you to do a lot, you will, be, will be not be understand the full thing about that chemistry or, or that reaction. When you're really doing the, uh, the experiment, then you understand so much about that reaction, right? But, if it's just a lecture, you don't understand at all. Or you just have a kind of like concept, but no idea what it is, right? But when you practice in, the, in your lab, you understand how the reaction say, just say, wow, the smoke come up, and then the explosion, it's like, yes, I, now I can see it. And that's what God wants you to do. You know, you just not just love yourself, but help other people go through, you know, all the try and arrows, issue in that life, you know, there's a lot of people out there need you, need the Lord, and that's what I want you to do, you know, I love yourself by love your family, love the process, love what God called you to do, and then serve, help other people, it will boost up your confidence and help you to become who God wants you to be. And that's what the world wants you to be. And I bet you, and I can guarantee you, you're going to make your parents so proud of you. And you're going to make yourself so useful for the future. Amen? Amen. So let's stand up and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you and I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Okay?